Okay, so this talk will be about accuracy in electronic structure calculations, mainly, of course, in, in solids. And uh, it is, of course, done with our Win2K code, but don't worry, it will not be a commercial for Win2K. The name Win2K will appear maybe just once in the last but one uh, transparency. So what is accuracy? How does it depend on it? Of course, mainly depends on the particular DFT approximation you are using. Depending on the property you are studying and on the solid and on the system, whether it's a solid or a molecule, whether you have specific atoms, be it heavy atoms or 3D or 4F systems, different GGA or DFT approximations will give you different accuracy, estimated accuracy. Let's call it this one. We will focus here mainly on binding energy and phase stability, uh, uh, but uh, or binding energy and geometry, but there are, of course, are other properties which one could look up. The second important thing about accuracy is, of course, that you have a precise way. So you, the method, the code to solve this Kronsham equation is important, of course, if you want to have accurate results. And we have, as you all know, these all electron codes or pseudo-potential and PAW versions. That's it. And of course, a third factor which is very important for accurate calculation is the person running these calculations. Because I think we have all, at least all the code developers which give away their code have seen that they have, that they are published results with their code which are more or less bullshit or very, very wrong because somebody has misused basically the code. Now, I will focus here on DFT and the challenge is to find a functional which leads us to this DFT heaven in terms of John Perdue's Jacob's ladder into DFT heaven. So we have benchmarked a wide variety of strongly bound and also weakly bound Van der Waals bound solids using a large variety of GGAs, meta GGAs, hybrid GGAs and meta GGAs and also Van der Waals functionals for a couple of very, very different systems, including light and also very heavy elements, including more or less on the same footing metals, insulators and insulators, semiconductors and insulators. And also some weakly bound solids, mainly rare gases, uh, layered solids and some molecular solids here. So what are the results when we focus on the mean absolute relative error for lattice parameters or for binding energy for GGAs, meta GGAs, hybrid or Van der Waals functionals, then you can see that on average the best functionals in each group can reach an average accuracy of half a percent in the lattice parameter and that is true for all classes of functionals uh, and also of 4 or 5 percent for the binding or cohesive energy. However, there is a big difference with GGAs. It's not possible with one GGA to reach the same accuracy, let's say, uh, in lattice constants. If you want an accurate GGA in lattice constant, you have to pay a price and your binding energy will be less accurate. So. This is of particular not true for meta GGAs. Modern meta GGAs may reach both quantities, let's say, on an equal footing. If we go, for instance, just as one example, to weakly bound layered materials as listed up here, the average error for semi-local functionals, you can see that, for instance, our well-known PBE functional is more or less a disaster in terms of the sea lattice parameter, it's overestimating it uh, tremendously. But the tau and mo TM meta GGA is probably the only acceptable semi-local functional in this test, which has decent errors in the strongly bound region, in the weakly bound region, and also a reasonable error only in the cohesive energy. On the other hand, if we go to Van der Waals functionals, then first of all we see that Van der Waals functionals not necessarily give you very good results. So in particular the original Van der Waals DF methods have even for C large error 
also the binding energy was very good, but for A they are more or less not usable, but we have a whole variety of different uh, functionals which perform quite reasonable, I would say, for such properties. If we now combine this and search where is, who is the winner, then we see that for strongly bound solids we have a couple of functionals all lying in this range, uh, which give you decent energies and lattice parameters, both of meta GGA and van der Waals, non-local van der Waals type. Uh, but for the weakly bound solids, only two functionals stand up, and this is PB sol with ref van, uh, uh, RVV10S or ref van der Waals DF2, which are clearly the best functionals in this series. Now, if you look at the functional which performs well here, but also here, then this unfortunately is not well seen here, but believe me, the most balanced functionals of all those tests is probably this ref van der Waals DFT2 functional. Can we understand these trends? Yes, it's easy just to look basically at the enhancement factor. Here is just the exchange enhancement factor where uh, if the enhancement factor is relatively small, we call this a soft GGA, and this is usually good for a lattice constant in a solid. If it's intermediate, then this is good for atomization energy of solids, and if it's very, very hard, then it's best, best GGA for atomization energy of molecules. And with GGAs, we are simply limited. We have no chance to switch over to different regions, while meta GGAs may be able to switch dependent on this alpha or tau or the kinetic energy or whatever, uh, switch from one enhancement factor to another and therefore are much more flexible. If we look at van der Waals functionals, typically van der Waals functional employ a more or less hard GGA. Again, see the different enhancement factors of all those functionals with a correspondingly hard or soft van der Waals functional. So this is the correlation energy with respect to the correlation energy of the free atom uh, as function of distance. And you see, for instance, this scan plus RVV10, since scan is already a relatively soft GGA in that uh, description, we only need a small correction with the, of the non, with the, due to the non-local part. Well, if you have the original van der Waals DF, for instance, a very hard GGA or so, then you also need a very, very hard non-local correlation to compensate this effect a little bit. Now, I said meta GGA seems to be a very, very good uh, new approach, I would say, and it's the question, shouldn't we at some point change from our standard PBE functionals to something else? So there was, for instance, the scan functional put forward by John Perdue, and in his work here, he showed that the misinterpretation of a ground state for binary uh, main group compounds goes from an error of, uh, let's say, 10% in PBE to basically almost zero using the scan functional. So this seems very impressive. The improvement is not so good for transition metal compounds, but still, the uh, improvement is quite decent. So now at least cesium chloride comes really out in cesium chloride structure, which is not the case in, in PBE. And also, for instance, the quartz comes out in the proper structure using scan. So is scan the method of choice? Yeah, as usually, all these new methods still have some flaws. For instance, scan gives you a magnetization energy of BCC iron which is twice as large as what it should be. The magnetic moment is 2.7 or something like this, and the same is true for cobalt and nickel. So if you are interested in magnetic systems or combining a molecule on a adsorption, adsorbed on an iron surface or so, yeah, scan is probably also not the method of choice. I should mention that other meta GGAs like TPSS or this tau and mo functional does not show this behavior, but give you decent uh, 
magnetis, magnetic properties also for this iron, cobalt, and nickel. Should we use hybrid functionals? We also saw that they perform quite well. Well, they also have the problem with itinerant metals. In particular, for instance, they predict palladium, rhodium, and platinum to be ferromagnetic metals. So if you want to study catalysis, cerium oxide, where you need maybe a hybrid DFT functional put on platinum, yeah, bad luck, platinum is ferromagnetic. Okay, so this brings me now to one slide where I want to compare the accuracy of pseudopotential calculations with our mean to K results. So we quite often compare our results with VASP result because mainly, simply because the majority of calculations uh, you can find in literature are done with VASP. And I have to admit, if I like it or not, it is a fact, if VASP is done carefully, usually very, very good agreement between VASP and VIN2K calculations is found, at least for PBE type calculations. Uh, if they, somebody has used another functional, this may be different. Just one example, if you're looking at band gaps with our tran blaha modified Beckett-Johnson method, which gives you band gaps with an accuracy of GW calculations, then suddenly Win2K and VASP differs up to 1 EV in the band gap. Simply because I think there is no proper pseudopotential in VASP for this functional. And this potential is very, very different from a PBE potential, that's also important. If you look at certain properties, like for instance this NMR chemical shifts, then yes, you can find perfect agreement between VASP and VIN2K for this set of small molecules, also with LCO methods, provided they use a quintuple basis set. Then you get really this agreement on the PPM level but, for instance, VASP had to introduce special PAWs, and with special PAWs, I do not mean these GW PAWs, but PAWs uh, putting, for instance, aluminum 2P in the valence, if you want to do an aluminum F3 or H3 or whatever molecules are in this list, only then you can describe this properly here. Uh, also, there is, of course, uh, a problem sometimes with VASP if you look at strange elements or compounds. One example which we just recently encountered, terbium oxide, F4F oxide in sodium chloride structure, the VASP minimum and the VIN2K minimum differ just, let's say, 1% in volume, which I would still call acceptable. But a very similar compound, terbium O2, the vast minimum is 10% off. And we don't really know why, but it seems that the transferability of a 2 plus and 4 plus ion for the 4F system simply is not given in, in these things. So this means be careful when using non-optimized pseudopotentials. Oops. This was, yeah. Pseudopotentials and non-optimized either for a particular DFT or for a particular property. Okay, this brings me to the summary. Uh, on average, you can uh, expect an accuracy of let's say half a percent in the lattice parameter and four or five percent for the binding energy in solids with a modern functional. Uh, for weakly bound systems, the error is twice or three times larger, but still remember these are average errors accuracies, and we always find outliers where the error can easily be five times larger than these values. Okay? Uh, when you consider meta GGAs, they are not that bad as standard GGAs for weakly bound solids. They give you usually some binding, not like PBE, virtually no binding, but they can still not compete with the best Van der Waals functionals. Uh, and if you are interested, so to say, in describing a strongly bound solids attached with some molecules where Van der Waals interactions are important or so, then maybe this Ref Van der Waals DF2 functional from Hamada seems to be a 
the most hmm, uh, re decent functional which describes strongly and weakly weak bonds in a reasonable way. And last word, of course, uh, accuracy tests also should probably done, be done with all electron codes, uh, except if you really have tested and, and checked your pseudo potentials or so against an all electron code. So with this, I thank you uh, for your attention. <laughs>